Hello, you guys, and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm Ryland Adams. And I'm Lizzie Gordon. See, my fear with that is that what if there's a little bit of lag and then people get bored because we're like... Because I'm breathing to say my name. (laughs) I need you to go faster. Like, hey, let's try one more time. (laughs) I'm Ryland Adams. And I'm Lizzie Gordon. And welcome to The Sip. Last week, you said I could introduce both of us and say your name. Okay, go for it. Fuck, what do I say? Okay. <laughs> Later in today's show, my sister, Morgan Adams, it feels weird to say her entire name, but she'll be joining us as well, which I'm super excited about. You know, really go in depth inside of her Get mind. Get to know her. What's going on? What's up? Yeah, what's going on with you? <laughs> um, Not much. I saw my best friend from childhood this weekend and her mom, Bee Mama. Shout out. Big fan of the pod. <laughs> I like that you're probably forcing all of your friends to listen to our podcast. I swear to God, I'm not forcing. I said, listen, if you want to, I know you love and support me. Live your best life. Right. Um, But uh, I've known Jesse since I was like 11. And back in the day, like maybe 10 years ago, I got blackout drunk at her house. And this is the biggest riff we've ever had in our relationship. I don't know what happened that night, but she did not talk to me for like two to three months. Well, then it has to be something made. And you were blackout. Obviously, you're blackout. I was blackout you don't drunk. Remember. So like, and all like I to this weekend, I used to make up in my mind like, oh, my God, it was so bad. Like, I never want to talk about this event. I never want to know what I did. But it had to be like bad, bad. Like, I probably pissed on her mom's favorite couch, like <laughs> ripped the curtains out of the windows, like just did some crazy bit shit in this house. <laughs> Because she didn't talk to me for three months. And, like, I was so mortified and so ashamed that, like, once a week I have a little flicker of anxiety in my stomach. Like, what the fuck did I do? Well, are you guys not in constant communication? We're in constant that- communication. But whenever they bring up that night or the event, I usually get like, oh, my God, let's about something else right now. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. All right. You're screaming. Sorry. I'm, the panic is real. So this weekend for Jesse's birthday, they brought up the event, but they added a detail that I'd never known before. And it was, B Mama called it the cheese event. And I was like, wait. So you like made mac and cheese and smeared it on their ceilings? I was like, I I confessed to them. I was like, honestly, you guys, I have no idea what happened that night. Jesse, I never listened to the voicemail you left me that day. I just let it be because I couldn't stand knowing what I'd done. Because I had so much shame and anxiety. Oh, my god! And she goes, well, I'll just tell you it's not that bad. And I'm like, I'm, I don't know if I can know this. Like, I don't know if I can know. She goes, it's really not that bad. You just took a huge bag, like a Costco bag of grated cheese and threw it everywhere. Put it everywhere. Put it on the stove. It was on top of the refrigerator. Uh, just cheese everywhere. So. I mean, it's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> it's a relief to know now. But a like, relief? I mean, that a, warrants yeah. me. If you did that in my kitchen, I definitely <laughs> wouldn't talk to you for a little Jessie while. Jesse was... Right? Jesse was pissed because in the morning I just dipped. And this is why I don't drink or do drugs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe that you weren't cooking with the cheese. You were more so decorating or throwing just a cheese Just some party. weird destructive cheese urge. Like... Uh, well... My love at the moment are horses. I like can't get enough of wanting to get a horse. And it started, we got this like obnoxious red statue Which is of a horse. And yeah. really, I was shopping for a new bedroom in our house. But Shane and I stumbled upon this horse. And then the more we stood there, the more I fell in love as well. And I just like, after that came, it snowballed into then me going to get a horse, or not going to get a horse. Oh my God, yeah, I don't yeah, have a horse no, 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 yet. Yeah. But I'm thinking it into existence because then we went horseback riding and now I literally am booking horse lessons. And I'm serious that I'm like 2.5 seconds away from getting a horse. That is so exciting. I know it's a big responsibility. It's a big responsibility, but if anybody, ha- like that's you. <laughs> Thank you. Like you've got horse dad written on your face. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> and I'm not going to jump the gun without really preparing myself and learning a lot. That's why I'm going yeah. to get like horse lessons. What kind of lessons are you doing? Like Western, equestrian? See, I want to learn it all, but I also want to learn like w- what it entails to really take care of a horse. I know I right. love them with all of my heart, yeah. but like, do I have an hour well, every day, morning and night to take care of it so our house doesn't smell like shit. Right. Your house is going to smell like shit regardless. Like, that's the burden of a horse. Uh, the other thing I was going to say, though, 
It's like, cancel. Fuck the horse. No, but like most people who have horses rent out a space at a stall and have riders and caregivers and all those things for the horse. There's a few of those really close, but I feel like there's nothing more special than being able to walk out back and see your little ponies. Why don't you get a mini horse? I could. I'm exploring different options. If you own a horse, hit me up. Give yeah. me some information. I've been watching lots of horse content on YouTube, like day in my life with the horse, different I people that, that own you. them, you know, really getting into it. Okay. You watching horse rearing videos is me watching makeup tutorials and I still can't blend for shit. Well, literally like, the category, you know how like YouTube has a great algorithm and tells you what you want to watch? Yeah. The category when I'm scrolling on my Apple TV now is just horses. And then there's <laughs> 50 videos about He's a my horse horses. Girl. I'm going to be, let me tell you. I'm proud of you. And I think a lot of the horse, mm, I'm not going to horse shame because I'm going to become one of them. <laughs> it's kind of like cat ladies though. You know how they yeah. have like the stigma of crazy cat ladies. I think I'm going to be that crazy horse dad. All right, let's get into some hot I topics before Morgan jo- joins the show. Okay. Um, the D'Amelio family, Charlie D'Amelio, TikTok star, famous yes. as famous can be. Dixie of doesn't want to be happy. Oh, yes, her song. And then she remixed it's just called it happy. with Marshmallow, yeah. I think. Was that who it was? <laughs> it's doing really well for her. So congratulations. Yeah. Well, they are trying to take over the world and more power <laughs> to them. I'm not kidding. Their agent, who is like a very powerful agent at UTA that runs all of digital, left UTA to be the president of their what media do they call company, it? the D'Amelio Family Enterprise. So the Los Angeles Times reported that they could be filling a void left vacant by the Kardashians because they're but could serious they, though? just like, recently could they ended. fill that void? <laughs> well, their reality show is already in the works. And here's what right. I'll say about that is a network would be stupid not to give them a reality show based on how famous they are. Is it going to be sustainable or entertaining is the question at hand. This is what confuses me so much. Like, I watch all the D'Amelio content, like at home, family making pizza night, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just so personally bored by it and confused as to <laughs> you're gonna what have the Generation fuck. Z coming. No, I after think here's you. the deal. I find the girls captivating. I think Charlie's adorable. I dyed my hair black to look like Charlie. It just didn't stick, and I didn't get TikTok famous, so it is what it is. I'm also 30 and she's 16. I guess that's part of the issue why I haven't really hit on TikTok. (laughs) I would say there's obviously something very special about them with how they've hit into not only the internet world, but mainstream. And here's what I'll say about the reality show. You don't have to be the most entertaining person in the world to have a hit reality show. Like, I also... Well, here's the deal, though. You have to be able to speak. Okay. Well, they... (laughs) I'm sorry for being problematic. Problematic. These girls should have a fucking ASMR channel. They're young. They're very young. They're young, but they have... Like, they have opinions. I don't know. Like, for me personally, it's like... This whisper talking thing. Like, have an ASMR channel. Here's what's going on with me. I don't expect much from the reality show. However, I'm ready to be surprised. And if I'm entertained by the reality (laughs) show, I will be there for them. I'll be rooting for, like, if I'm genuinely entertained by the reality show that they put out, I will watch it. I'm not going to not watch it. I mean, I'm probably going to watch it regardless (laughs) of how I feel about it. But, like... And I say this with a lot of love. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Kardashians are that exciting and engaging or entertaining. There's like, five million of them, though, for endless fu- storylines. Ten million Kardashian children, and that's where yeah. I mean. And then their children and their spouses. A reality show, though, they film like a hundred hours a yeah. week and then chop it down to thirty minutes. Yeah. And like, if the reality show production company is good enough, anyone's going to be. You can find a story anywhere. Entertaining. Yeah. D'Amelio family, we wish you well. Best of luck. I know you're already rolling. <laughs> <laughs> in the cash so good for you and i do fuck with dixie's song <laughs> i want to talk about justin bieber because not only is he promoting new music he's all over right now yeah. but the thing that just caught my <laughs> eye the most and i'm like highly offended i want to say is he stepped out in the only shoes that can imaginably be worse than crocs and they're yeezy foam runners that retail for 75 dollars. however they're sold out and they're reselling for a thousand dollars and it for people People listening on audio, they're like Crocs on steroids. Worse, like crack Crocs. They're 
absolutely <laughs> insane. They're like enclosures for your feet with holes. It's like if you were on space. But they like, look hella aerodynamic. <laughs> like straight up, like slap those bad boys on Usain Bolt and see that boy fly. Like what? <sighs> I fuck with everything Yeezy makes and it's kind of weird and sad and pathetic. So have you bought any of them? No, fuck no. I can't afford that. I can't afford $75 Crocs, let alone a $1,000 okay, pair well, of Crocs. Have you ever been a Croc person? Because that's highly controversial as well. Like you're either all the way there for Crocs or mm. you think they're the worst. What, you've got some? Mm. I'm not shaming you if you do. They look no, very comfortable. No, I mean, like I've stolen Crocs from friends. I've never bought my own pair of Crocs. Cause even Aren't Crocs expensive? Aren't they like $45? I think so. Well, Justin's always messed with Crocs because he did a collaboration with Crocs that's also sold out yes. and his drew line yeah. and they have all these like funky pins on them which to each their own like if they're i i'd try them if I, yeah i don't want to buy them but if somebody sent me them i'd probably wear them here's a philosophy that i have about it all if you are <laughs> if you are justin bieber you are a trendsetter justin bieber can look awful justin bieber could put something on his body that everybody like in unison agrees like no matter your relation like your religion your race your creed you mm -hmm. agree this is a garbage fucking outfit and then justin bieber puts it on or Haley puts it on and all of a sudden i want to wear that outfit yeah they influence fashion trends yeah and i'm almost thinking about getting some just to rock them around to really form an opinion <laughs> but i think it's a bold choice uh to make yeah. are you enjoying justin's new music I am. I really am enjoying Justin's new music. I like Justin. I didn't love the lonely one when I watched the video at first. Um, and here's where it got me. His Saturday Night Live performance yeah. of Lonely. And yeah. not just the vocals of it all. Because it was like, I was really dumbfounded by how great he, he really is sing. at singing but yeah. i also loved that sweater and talking about <laughs> influence sweater. i went to his stylist page to see who he was wearing went to celine who was the designer tried to cop the sweater myself it's expensive yeah oh it was like 1300 dollars, but i couldn't find the exact one so i opted but you would have done it matter of fact i oh, probably such would a have boss move, because dude. i liked it so much i love that for you and then now before we get to morgan i have to end <laughs> on demi lovato's ex-fiance <gasps> because he's doing the absolute most now he has released his single i guess his rebuttal to he's demi afraid. lovato's val valid he's afraid to fall in love again so it wasn't about Demi. I could No, it's I, about Demi. Did you listen to it? I did twice and I watched the music video, which I didn't find very stimulating. I couldn't watch the music video. I feel like this song was cooked up in the middle of the night and then just like shot randomly. And it's, is it just like a bunch of like close up shots of him with like weird neon light in like darkness singing about how it's horrible. It's like produced. too dark and yeah. the comments are turned off on the video. Oh, no. <laughs> God knows why. <laughs> but I just think it's so funny that he is living for the attention. Yeah. And I guess this might be the most attention he's ever gotten. Yeah. So he's thinking, let me just capitalize on this and really cash in. I counted. He's at over 36 photos since October 4th when he like did his first crying photo. Oh, my um, break God. Because Demi Lovato supposedly, allegedly did him wrong. Did you even listen to the whole song, though? Yes, I did. I didn't really go to interpret, interpret it. You don't, you don't, uh, no, interpret. <laughs> interpret the yeah. lyrics. So you think you it's, don't need to interpret so it. It's on the surface. He's afraid to love after yeah. Demi just ruined his whole life. Yes. Cut to him now posting photos. Being in love. Of, or in love with an American Idol alum. He's posting multiple photos with this girl and Demi's fans are taking to his Instagram to critique him saying like, hey, you got over this really fast and I'm by no means one to like judge somebody's process or how long it takes them to do something. But the ex exception is with Max because all he's done is make his Instagram a cry fest yeah. about how he's like not over it. He went to the beach where he proposed to get paparazzi. Literally took his hat off when he felt the paparazzi on him at the beach so that they could see him better. Like nothing about Max has been genuine or real. It's all been a bad act. And I guess if he wants the attention and publicity, he got exactly what he wanted. Yeah. And maybe good for him. Maybe this is what he wants. I don't think this is ever going to be good for him. Like a talentless ass munch is a talentless <gasps> ass okay. munch. I'm coming, at very... it from a, I'm coming at it from a feminist standpoint. And I really do feel like this kid used Demi Lovato. <laughs> okay. And is running with it to the finish line. And I think that's pretty gross. 
<sighs> All right. Well, with that, you guys, if you want to support this show, go to rylandadams.com to cop your Ryland Adams tea hoodie. Use code Ryland for 25% off. And if you're listening on audio, be sure to go to the Sip Clips channel on YouTube to watch full length video episodes. When we come back, my sister Morgan is here. Okay, everybody, our first guest on the Sip ever is my sister, YouTube extraordinaire, 23 year old. Um, what else would you define yourself as? <laughs> um, I am a cat mom. Cat mom. Cat mom. Snail rearer. <laughs> I'm also a snail mom. Oh God, we're gonna have to get. Well, welcome Morgan Adams to the show. It seems really weird for me to say Morgan Adams because you're yeah. You know my what's sister. interesting? I never like when people introduce themselves in the third person. Like you know how everyone on YouTube's like. Hey guys, it's Morgan Adams. Like I couldn't do that even if I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, that does always feel a little bit awkward for me too. Or if you're like, Ryland really wants a cake right now. <laughs> it's a weird, it's a weird narcissistic thing. Is that you something think? you do? Yeah. You do do that? No, I don't do that. No, but like That'd when you weird. answer the phone, like people um, fully say like, hey, Lizzie Gordon. Is Lizzie. Like yeah. I could never be like, hey, this is Morgan. Well, no. on your I can't answering even... machine, that's different. Oh, like, I don't have no, one of those. No, I was going to say, I don't even have an answering machine because of that. I hope when people <laughs> call me that they like hope it's the wrong number after I don't have an well, answering machine. Well, you also don't answer your, like you'll answer the phone for me if you know it's like you need me to pick or you need to pick up. But if somebody's just calling you good luck getting a hold of morgan yeah yeah but see i do answer your calls because i know that you have respect for my boundaries enough not to call me unless it's important <laughs> yeah because he knows that i really don't like that well do you accept facetimes from people because that's where i draw the no, line a motherfucker who's gonna cold time like cold facetime call you is a psychopath <laughs> <laughs> like i like like talking to my friends like on facetime but not all the time if because people want to talk for like two hours yeah that's why i don't answer because i'm not in the mood ever to talk no. for two hours and i don't need to see your face that makes me sound like a really mean friend but i'm just not a <laughs> phone chatter see i just think it's invasive unless i'm really close to you to like bring you into my yeah. personal space my crazy hair and la -di -da -di -da. but this is your first ever podcast right yeah i've never been on a podcast oh so my god i don't know what i'm doing legit? kind of it's also really hot in here uh, <laughs> but, i'm sorry i can't tell if that's the rumor because i'm nervous well it, you're nervous to be on the podcast of your yeah, brother because this is on like the apple music charts and stuff like <laughs> people that might not know that i'm kind of a little weird and awkward might see this and be like wow that girl's really odd <laughs> well they'll just be listening if they're on apple podcasts but what okay. has our i was thinking you might be like delusionally hot because you actually have been dying like well i can't say dying but you yeah i'm dying <laughs> like the days but are aren't counting all <laughs> yeah but it really freaks me out because when i was a kid i used to have dreams that i would die before 24 and now i feel like my days are like ticking because you're 23 yeah i just turned 23 which might be psychologically a part of the fact that i think that i'm dying but i really don't know so, so how much of well first what do you think your illness is you're having dilated pupils but at different times and can you not see through the pupil when it's dilated no it the whole eye turns like blue when <gasps> my left people will dilate but sometimes it's the right one so they don't know what's wrong but he because i'm afraid to go to the doctor he decided that it's from my sleeping pills well yeah do you take costco sleeping pills that and she's like they're not that strong and then my mom goes i took one and i i couldn't wake up for like three days and i was like they seem pretty strong to they me they're so strong like you take one and you're out for the next 18 hours yeah i took one one time and like this was at the peak of me abusing substances and i was just trying to keep going and like make this thing of brownies but i had to scream in order to stay standing so i was just pulling pots down like ah! <laughs> like putting them down. well i know a lot of people will try to take sleeping pills and try to have sex or like jack off i mean this is a little aggressive especially with my sister but you know what i mean so is that like, your thing morgan see what you can <laughs> you just popping sleeping pills trying to stay up and jack off yeah i really love to take four sleeping pills and then spend all night just okay feeding the the meat. Okay. You know? <laughs> but do you ever try to see how much you can accomplish after you've taken the sleeping pill? No, I'm not crazy. So no. you're done for the night once you pop the, the sleeping pill. Yes, but I'm also on another medication, which apparently I didn't know this because I didn't look into it, but you could literally die from taking a sleeping pill or at like, the same time. Well, yes. You know what? You do have to be really careful about that, especially if you have, thank you. This There's like a ghost that's moving my mic. Uh, yeah. It keeps <laughs> drifting. Yeah. <laughs> but 
But um, it is really difficult because some doctors, if you have one doctor prescribing one thing and they don't know what the other doctor is prescribing, you can get really fucked that way. Well, yeah. And then you, I think you definitely need to check with your doctor when you're mixing any sort of medication. Yeah. But the I feel like I need to make a public service announcement what? too. If you take antibiotics while you're on birth control, the antibiotics cancel out your birth control and you can get pregnant. They don't tell you that. <laughs> and how did you find that out? Because are someone, you pregnant? <laughs> no, thank God. <laughs> no, I'm not pregnant. But like, mm. I've I've heard of this happening to people, and I'm just like, why didn't your doctor tell you? And they're like, I don't fucking know. <sighs> so it makes me mad. Yeah. So I I take a lot of medications, and I'm tr currently trying to get off of all of them because I got them all from different doctors. I came to the conclusion that Morgan just needed to get off of all of her medication and then reevaluate if she's still sick or not. Yeah, but I've been researching it because I've been having withdrawal symptoms all summer because these medications are like hardcore do you want to know what i take well i mean i'm sure we can't even pronounce the names but you can yeah. tell us it's like for well, your back I, I take a nerve pain medication birth control an antidepressant birth control. and a sleeping pill do you have a boyfriend that i don't know about no you take it for like acne and stuff so and what if cool. a guy wants to take it for their acne <laughs> then that that's sucks not how for that you. works so yeah. it really does <laughs> So guys just can't take it if they want it for acne. No. So what? You're just going to get off of them because right now you're just like feeling lethargic and sleeping well, all of the time and your eyes are dilated. Yeah, I'm trying to get off of them, but I've been researching it and you can have withdrawal symptoms for up to 10 months. <sighs> See, this is why you and can't take... And they're crazy. Well, I yeah. think I'm addicted to my... I had like a cough medication and it's way before coronavirus even started, but I'm now afraid to get off of it because it says I could become violently depressed if I get off of it. Well, I told him that would be kind of everything because then he <laughs> knew, would know what it was like to live a day like me. <gasps> oh because, okay, gosh. this is why we have... It, we don't have issues, but I will say... That you sometimes, I'm not trying to attack you. Let's not get in a scream Well, we did here. get in a Kardashian-esque fight the other we night. We did. And we don't have to talk about why, but... In my defense, the number one symptom of my withdrawals from my medicine is extreme agitation. So just... And he's everyone, extremely agitating. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So imagine if you... Okay, because we're siblings, right? So imagine if you have a sibling, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, here I am. And already take out like the mental or the physical proportion of all of it he already got better genes than me you have no acne you're skinny you're likable and on the second end of that you're <laughs> likeable, not mentally like it's a genetic defect. yes but you're i got the <laughs> mental distressness from both of our parents and you got none of it but you know what i think you gain in is you're a lot i think i would argue you're more likable relatable and more funny than i am like i know that right. i'm not i'm not punchline <laughs> funny so and i right. that is correct i, I do <laughs> think people <laughs> that are a little bit tortured are uh better entertainers and that's just a matter of yeah fact. but then you also have to live life tortured so imagine me because i feel like sometimes you live in candy cane village like in your life everything is like sunshine and rainbows and you're like oh my god look at this like pop tart that i bought it's so pretty and i live in like bombs away boulevard <laughs> So sometimes I come over here and I'm like, you are just so happy that I can't help but be annoyed. Okay, well, here's my thing. I've always known. Well, and that sounds mean, but I wouldn't say that if you weren't my brother. Like, no, I don't take offense to that. And I will say a large part of that for me, I believe, is because working from home is already depressing. Being a YouTuber is very isolating. And mm. I a, at least have like somebody that I'm around all the time. You're living alone. And B, I force myself to have a schedule even as much as I hate it. Like I have to get up and do something even during the pandemic and i think that subconsciously makes me feel a little bit happier but i right. also don't have the looming state of depression that i know a lot of people just get either seasonally or just because something in their brain is off a little bit well that, that sounds mean <laughs> but what do they call it no like, my what brain is... is off that's why i get Chemical so imbalance. angry because all these doctors i've been diagnosed with like 10 different things so now i'm having withdrawal symptoms that make me extremely unwell and so then that's why i'm dying morgan was in colorado she was all excited to come back we don't have to get into we've only fought twice in our entire life 
and we don't need yes. to detail our fights. Both of which are while I've been withdrawing from these medicines. So I guess the secret for you is just be like, I'm feeling very agitated right now. Don't press any buttons <laughs> <laughs> because then I'll know not to go there because I just kept pushing her and I felt like she was taking jabs at me. And it literally, this is the first time that I've ever blown up at somebody on Friday night, just a couple of nights ago, Morgan came over and I just jabbed right when she got here. I was like, are you going to finally be nice to me? And then it escalated <laughs> to like a full blown, like me screaming at the top of my lungs. And Shane had to mediate until we were fine again. Yeah, I was in the car screaming and he was inside in screaming and Shane was coming back and forth. It my, was crazy. My favorite detail is that you rolled up at the same time as the Postmates guy. I did, and I and thought so someone was coming in to kill us, and I was like, oh, God, now they're going to be even more mad at me because I just brought in a serial killer through the gate. For a second, I just loved that this poor Postmates man would just be there like, um, I just need to take a picture of this bag so I can get the fuck out of here. Rylan's like throwing the bags around. You're yeah. screaming and crying he in the car. He was screaming at me while he was like holding a pizza box, and he's like, you are crazy. And I'm I'm pointing. Like, it's not pointing. Pizza, and when I finally <laughs> I? did have enough and I was like, I've said what I needed to say. Shane's Shane and my mom are walking <laughs> out of the house to try to mend the situation. And I have all of the food in my hand and I throw it at the ground no. as hard as I can. And I just walk inside. You're so we got in a fight one time, like over the phone. And I don't know if we were texting or talking or whatever, but this is like the one argument we've ever had. And I was wearing this dress that was ill-fitted. And I like was so mad after we stopped talking that I like went out to Joe and I was like, fucking Rylan, blah, 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 blah. And Joe goes, honey, your titties are out right now. <laughs> and I looked down and both my tits are just like on opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> like, and I was like, that's not the point. But I think when I fought with you, I wasn't even yelling. Like, no. I think yelling yeah. at you is the most mad I've ever gotten at somebody. Yeah. But here we are a couple days later, nice and fine. And, and I think we learned things from it. I think it was good because we don't we haven't really fought before. Like we'll get agitated and just let it go. But I think we addressed some things, at least on my end. She's like going to leave this podcast like hating me. Well, more. we were in a fight about a horse. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, my God, which I was telling you. I mean, the horse was just the icing on the cake. Morgan wasn't like being in favor of the horse, which like fine, whatever, more power to her. I just didn't think she needed to voice how much she didn't like the horse to me. Well, not didn't this like is a horse. real horse, right? Or is it the red horse? Well, the red horse expanded into the real horse. Oh, you don't like the red horse? Oh, I'm fine with the red horse. <laughs> the red horse is probably what she prefers. <laughs> yeah. I was just telling him because they want to get a horse that a lot of horses end up homeless because people don't realize how like daunting and hard and expensive and 40 years of your life long it is to take care of a horse. Yeah. And I was saying. But I was already in a bad mood and he's over here like Candy Cane Village like I'm to get a horse and i just got done like throwing up a quest bar in the bathroom because i'm oh my sick God. and nauseous and i have a headache and my mom <laughs> made me come over and i'm like horses suck <laughs> and we got get into a, a snail yeah, and i was like yeah I get a snail it was so while morgan was in colorado i was watching her cat and now her snails which, <laughs> how many snails does she have how many two snails? two you have two do you know how cat. snails procreate with each other yeah do you know how though no no so snails don't have a gender or like a sex organ they just decide upon, is it copulation? What do you call it? They fuck. So when they fuck, one snail gets to have this thing called a love dart that shoots out, makes the other snail have a gender and impregnates it. And how many can they have at once? That I don't know. I got stuck on the love dart and looked into <laughs> nothing else. They can sleep for up to six months. And that's why I felt like emotionally connected to them because I was like, that's how I feel. Like sometimes I'm just dead for six months and then I come out of my show and I'm like, I'm back, everyone. That's so poetic. Are but, people in the podcast interested about snails? Uh, no, probably well, they not. fucking better get used to it because <laughs> this podcast is all snails all the time. <laughs> okay. I wanted to say like Shane mended our fight the other night, but I also think he's largely responsible for us becoming close in the first place because you were done with our family. You had I moved to Hawaii. I was fully ready to like get an emancipation. Like I know it to be mean but i hated all of you oh my gosh <laughs> at one point in my life keep in mind because no one ever like i fully think when i was in high school i should have gone to like a psych ward like i was drinking before i would get to the school parking lot and be like drinking alcohol i would not go to school like i was literally losing my mind wait i did not know this about you i thought you were like a goody good like a oh sweet no. fucking... i fully like lost it in high school like in, I was insane and I kept telling mom and dad like 
I think I need help. And they were like, you're fine. Well, they were going through something of their own as well. Like I, when you're a little older, you realize that parents are people too. And they had a hardship as well. Yeah. I'm very interested in like nature versus nurture because we obviously have the same nature, but our nurture was completely different because we're like a decade apart. And his childhood was once again, Candy Cane Boulevard. And mine was Bombs Away Island. So I think it's interesting, like how different we are now and like i don't think it's nature i think it's nurture mm. i guess yeah i think there's and a he was out of the house part. when you were at a pivotal age and yes. that's the other thing is we were never close enough in age to merge friendships or coexist when we were in high school right. or whatever like my brother was three years older so he was a senior when i was a freshman so i like would get to go to my brother's parties and stuff but then you just decided to jump ship and go to hawaii yeah to go to college to yeah. get away which from i thought everyone. was so bold and brave and i loved that it was but it was also like I just Googled the farthest place I could go to college to never have to see these clowns again. <laughs> and that's where I went. I'm not even taking responsibility for that at that moment, though, because we I mean, I was also out here at that time, like trying to eat and feed myself and pay rent. So I don't no, know why I'm you'd be running away from me. I'm not blaming anyone because I just I just don't think we were like a family unit ever. And then I would get so like triggered because people in college, like their families would send them like gift boxes. And people I would have be, the like, same trauma. Where's yeah. your family? And I, I would just legit tell people like, I don't have a family. Like I am an only uh, child. You're going to make mom cry at home. She tried but her best. I know she tried her best. And now <laughs> as a growing adult, I understand that like parents are people too. That And they had like severe problems. Dad had severe, like a very problematic childhood which probably transferred into his adult life. So now I've fully forgiven them and like our relationship has moved forward as like three adults and we're buddies now. Like I go stay there all the time. Yeah, and you did move here because of like your moving here wasn't a conception of mine either. Like one day Shane was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, Morgan's gonna move here and live with us. And I was like, <laughs> okay, we're really not that close, but I guess we'll figure it out. Like, You're like, who's Morgan? <laughs> what <laughs> well we only saw each other like once a year on christmas yeah, yeah and then we did the stanley hotel video on shane's channel and people just really took a liking to you at that point so shane said you're very likable morgan really yeah and you're gorgeous see that feels like me like attention seeking to be like i feel like i'm not but i just feel like i'm not very like Maybe because I don't socialize a lot, like yeah. human to human. But See, and I think that's, I think you need to get out more. Yeah, maybe I just spend too, too much time alone. Because <laughs> once I sales. like start hanging out with people, I just fully don't know what to say. Because I'm like, what do you want to talk about? Like what I did all week at home? I'm kind of the <laughs> same way. But like at a certain point, like when I was 23, I was a mess. Like I was, I actually quit drinking on my 23rd birthday because I oh had a hangover God. where I was shitting and vomiting into the same uh -huh. toilet bowl. Sorry, that's all I'll say. I but mean, I was I'm like, just... never again. And, and I haven't you lived had... here, right? Living? Yeah, yeah. And mm. I, um, but after I stopped drinking and I started like really embod like knowing who I was, like knowing what I liked instead of just trying not to feel shit, like it becomes so much easier to be in public and be like, oh, the fuck the, like, I don't give a shit what you think about me, bitch. Like I'm happy inside. I don't know you. My well, snails love me. <laughs> I've got a big, beautiful life. Like, yeah. Are you dating in LA? Are you going to date? Yeah, who are, are you, you dating? dating? Who are you talking apps? to? What's his name? What's his social? <laughs> what? You're He's... dating someone? That sounded mischievous <laughs> as fuck. No. <laughs> I just like to keep my options open. I don't want to, you know. You're not sliding. It. Are, you got, are you opposed to getting on apps, though? Yes. Oh. Okay, the thing with apps... I think if you don't want to be lonely in today's day and age, though, you almost have to cave in. I would rather be lonely than be accompanied by a fake... You can't say everyone on an app is no, fake. No, I'm not saying everyone's fake, but, like, wouldn't you rather... The problem with girls my age, okay, which I have a lot of problems, too, so I'm not pointing fingers, but a with lot of finger my pointed. friends <laughs> would choose, like unfulfilling love yeah just opposed to being lonely so they get into all these bad relationships with people just to feel that you have someone and i yeah. would rather be lonely than be with someone that like isn't fully what i want but you got to put yourself out there to find what you want and i think you'll have to compromise with some like nobody's ever going to be exactly what you want so you're gonna have to compromise at some point I but, know. like, pick a good compromise. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you saying right now? There's a lot right of now? compromises <laughs> that are too big of a compromise. What would be a deal breaker when finding a companion? Like, is there something um, that is just 
not like Shane can't stand that I pick my nose. Like he physically. You don't vomits. say that up front though. You don't. Well, you yes, should. <laughs> uh, well, I'm giving an example. Like, did you go on a first Shane's date? trapped with this nose picker now. Yeah, exactly. No. Like you're not going to go on a first date and be like, I pick my nose. No, but they're going to find out eventually. So I'm saying once you get with the man or woman, who knows? Is that the way you flow? I guess I've never um, asked you. I would say. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, first of all, you have. And okay, yes, you have. You I have a traumatizing experience. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, wh- you what can't was the expose question? people. Uh, what's deal a deal breaker in and are you gay? Oh. <laughs> so, my deal breaker is I'm not going to be one of those YouTube girls that's dating a dude without a job mm. because they all act like their boyfriends have jobs, and newsflash, they don't. They live Shit. on. They don't. Like, they li- these girls are so, like, it's hard. I'm, I'm I not, don't know. I understand what you're saying, but it's also not an easy find to like find somebody else that is wildly successful or in ambitious. a realm of their own. Yeah. Because well, the thing is, I don't need someone to be wildly successful. I just want just them to employed. have a job. Yeah, right. Just to have something of their own. Right. Like because, I'm not going to have some dude and be like, well, I'll pay you $50 an hour to f- use my camera and film me. Like, I think that's so weird. Yeah. Like grow a backbone and tell your boyfriend to get a job. And or also, like get a boyfriend that has a job. Yeah. So maybe you, start with yeah. that. You would resent them over time because it's like you're working together, you're living together, you're paying their rent. So I do agree with you on that. Yes. But like physically speaking, is there anything like no? Because I did I, because Shane's so violently um, disturbed by my nose picking. I looked up a study and <laughs> in a study of a thousand you people need to cut that no, out or do it in the bathroom alone. In a study of a thousand people, scientists found that 91 percent of people pick their noses. I'm saying it's a pretty normal thing. But why yeah. can't you do it in the bathroom or in the shower? Or all something? I want to do right now is pick my nose. Like, I just feel like there's something going on on this well, side of the wall. Yeah, Like I've like, done it. We all have done. Done I'm it, not but don't do about it on the it, couch. Though. I mean, if I do do it on the couch, I like and I discard of it in no, like a Lacroix can. Problem. I'm not you wiping it. Don't do it, it on the couch. Are I'm you not wiping how, it on the you, furniture? But go to the bathroom. Like, what are you doing? You're sitting on the couch with me. You start picking your. If Joe sees me picking my nose, I get instantly mortified. Well, isn't yours farting? Or you can't fart in front of your partner. I won't do that. Would you? Oh hell no! I would not. But I had a horrible thing happen with Joe in regards to like that business. Well, what, you shit your pants? No, like <laughs> Joe, so Joe has one of those, um, what is it called, cedar wood sticks in the bathroom for us to burn oh, after we shit. Yeah. But it's like, it takes 10 minutes to light that motherfucker up before it starts smoking and can mask the smell of your shit. So some, half the time I don't bother. Right. Or I do it just enough and then just set it down and it's like not getting it. So Joe comes in the backyard yesterday, or not yesterday, but a little while ago, and he's like, I, I got poopery. And I went, okay. <laughs> And he was like, I just want you to know that I noticed that you're not burning the cedar stick. And I was like, I get it. Okay, fine. I, he's like, so I got you poopery so that you can burn it because when you don't spray the poopery or burn the cedar wood, it just lofts right into my office. And I was like, I fucking get it. And like, I, oh, I have poop fright. <laughs> like, you I can have, only poop at your house. That, and when no, like, I could, if we went on a vacation for 10 days, I fully would not poop that whole time. That's not okay. No, it's not. But it's, I had that when I was in high school, and if I went to summer camp, I would wait till like three o'clock in the morning and go take a shit. But that's when everyone's shitting because we all have poop, right? I just don't think you guys can get married to somebody that you can't fart around. Like you that- guys are both boys, though. Like it's different. <laughs> yeah, but I just feel like that's something. What you're gonna go in a room every time you have to fart, then you're you're gonna have a chronic stomach ache all the time because you're holding it in. Like for me, <laughs> I can't wait for everyone to leave so I can start farting. I like pick my French bulldog up and go into our bedroom, and when Joe comes in, he's like. Oh, Oh, and Jelly's been farting. I'm like, yeah, Jelly's <laughs> really going through it right now. <laughs> like, All right. Up. You guys are, I can't with you, but I did want to talk. Okay. People were very invested in the sign talk last week, mm-hmm. and you're always hot and cold with your sign. And Morgan always tells me she's a cusper. I am a cusper. See, look at, she's already getting mad at me about it. Yeah, because they say that it's not real. We say, well, I don't, I've never looked into if a cusper is real or not. And w- what you mean by a cusper is that you're on the last day of being a Leo? Yes. Yeah, so I am on Leo cuts off August 22nd, Virgo starts August 23rd. So there's like two days in between. It's like the 21st to the 24th. You're on the cusp. So Leo's, your strengths are creative. I would say you're very creative. I'm going through a flat line right now. Though. Okay, yeah, but everyone has ups and downs. But I would say yeah. generally speaking, you are creative. Thank passionate. you. That's very. Uh, Do you think you're passionate? 
Yes. About certain things, but I'm not comfortable all the time, like, talking about what I'm passionate about. Yeah, you're not a big talker. Like, you, <laughs> yeah. no, Morgan isn't the type that's going to come over and you have to, like, dig a story out of her, which I appreciate and I don't appreciate. I'm similar to you, sort of, in that way. Yeah. Whereas, like, Lizzie will tell you her story when she gets here. Yeah, and I won't shut the fuck up. And she won't ever shut up. No. But Morgan, she'll kind of listen to other people's stories and then, like, you have to really ask her to get a story out of her generous i would say you're generous i try my best warm-hearted <laughs> cheerful and humorous i, I say, am not cheerful okay that, that is not <laughs> well take away the cheerful but i would say for the most humorous. part you are the leo strengths okay and then uh, okay. the weakness is arrogant yeah i can see that sometimes stubborn no. Okay. I would say our fight was about you being a little bit stubborn. No, our fight was about you being a little bit rude. Okay. We're, I'm not going to go back <laughs> into this fight, but I would Maury. say. Maury. And then Maury. I would say the biggest weakness trait, the general trait of Leos is self-centered. Are you calling me self-centered? No, we're going through. I'm letting okay. you evaluate. So I like to think that I'm not that self-centered. Maybe I am, and I'm just delusional to it, but that's the part of Leo's that... I'm taking a sip of coffee. What are you... <laughs> Is that like a... No, I would say most... Shade? I would say most people, not just Leo's, typically, I think you have to train yourself to not think about yourself first. Okay, I, it... but while we're on the, like, the topic of sign shaming, I also am embarrassed to be a Leo because I think Leo's are also awful. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> and I am one, but that's because they're always so selfish. And I don't think I'm that selfish. That is their big ticker. And then the other is lazy and inflexible. And I, would I say, am lazy. But I don't think you're inflexible. I think you're Can actually you pretty. I, no, anymore. I, I, no, well, you I'm could say, at one point. Sorry, she can go with the flow like you. Most of the time, you're fine uprooting whatever plan you have. Mm -hmm. if you're not the one insinuating the next plan because you're you'll get like jolts of like let's go do this crazy thing right now and i'm always like no <laughs> yeah i'm not a planner <laughs> you keep saying insinuating like it means instigating <sighs> <sighs> see i'm that's like you dad him our other brother and our dad are all Tauruses, and it is their way or the highway, whether they want to admit it or not so me and mom had to learn how to be flexible and just go with the flow I would agree. And I think that you and Austin are more like dad than you guys would like to admit. Oh, I'm exactly like and dad. And maybe I'm a little more selfish than I'd like to admit. I agree with everything you just said. So it says that you like theater, taking holidays, being admired, expensive things, bright colors, and fun with friends. I would say all of that, but theater. <laughs> Do you like theater? Do you go to theater? No. Do you like bright colors? No. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know her. They don't know me. Okay, see, these but people can don't you read the Virgo you. ones? The yeah, Virgo okay. ones are better. Here's... Jenna Marbles is a Virgo, so I identify as a Virgo. Okay, the Virgo strengths are loyal, analytical, kind, hardworking, and practical. Virgos have really good strengths. That's what yeah. I see. I think I'm like that. Take out the hardworking and add the laziness of the Leo, and that is me. So this is why you believe you're a cusper. Yes, because I have traits of both. And then the weaknesses of the Virgo are shyness, worry, overcritical of self, and others, all work and no play. You're definitely not all work and yeah, no play. Yeah, take out those ones, but like I am. <laughs> I Miss me with that shit, bitch. I'm very overcritical of myself and others. And mom always has to tell me that I don't know how other people feel. Yes. Because I just assume that I have a spidey sense and I can sense how people are feeling. But sometimes I have to tell myself that I don't. I guess that could be a little self-centered because you're assuming how other people feel. Would you like to say anything to the people before you leave? Um, are you going to start your own well, podcast one day? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm good at in life. So, <laughs> Well, you just started college again. I did. Is that a secret? Do you want that kept it quiet? It can be. In, I don't like talk about it to people, but what like you, we could talk about it. I where guess. are you going? What are you doing? This is so, so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is my fourth college. And what college and, is it? Um, but your credits are transferring, my, right? So I applied to University of Arizona because I got an ad for it on a podcast. Wow. And, oh my gosh. Work. Mm -hmm, and it was free to apply. And they took all of my credits from all three of my universities that I've been to. So I was like, all Congratulations. Right. But I'm only taking uh, two classes. That's okay. Well, so I'm just going slow and steady. How many What are you more? taking? Well, see, I guess I don't really talk about like why I'm doing this. Yeah. Why yeah. are you going to, back to school? So, 
I'm very interested because I've been wrongly diagnosed with every mental disorder in the DSM-5. And I think that there has to be like a correlation between philosophical values and psychology. But I don't think that there's enough research on that. Morgan, fuck yes. That is so sick. So, but that's like my little nerdy side. So I just don't tell people about that because it's a lot to explain. Lead with that passion for it. It's not, that's incredibly interesting. So how many more classes or years do you have till you would graduate? And what's your degree going to be in? I don't know yet. I'm taking. <laughs> well, do you want to... the thing is like I already have a job, so I'm not going to school to get a job. I'm just following like a passion project. And you I like guess. being a YouTuber still. You're not leaving the platform. I'm not leaving the platform, but I'm trying to figure out what to do next. So I'm just kind of I'm trying to get off my medication so I can get back on the wagon <laughs> yeah. wheel. Well, and also because I also am in like a lot of physical pain. But I think a lot of that, like sometimes your brain can't process if something's psychological pain or physical, or physical. pain. So it'll take psychological pain and turn it into physical pain, which I think is my problem. Yeah. But oh. you go to a doctor and they're like, oh, you have fibromyalgia. Well, yeah, you here's have this, some painkillers. That's yeah. why I told yeah. you to stop Googling things because I think the power of your mind is so influential. And when you start Googling things and self-diagnosing and thinking X, X, X is wrong with me and I'm about to explode, I think you create more problems for yourself because when you do have a lot of stress, <laughs> your body breaks down. Yeah, and then you get more stress. Yeah. I'm a chronic Google. All right, you guys. Well, okay, <laughs> next time I come on, I'll say something a little more cheerful. Sorry. I don't know. I think it's good. I think it's real. And yeah. I think a lot of people are struggling right now. So why wouldn't you share what's actually going on? Especially because I don't think it's something you share on your channel. Right. But I am very aware because sometimes it can be misconstrued. Like I'm very aware that I have like a great life. And I'm like very grateful for my family and my job, but I'm just saying what's in my well. You're working through your withdrawal trauma, withdrawal brain, like every other 23 year old in the world that's just trying to figure yeah, out yes. their purpose. But on I the do say a prayer every night, and I'm like, thank you. And I, when I wake up, I like write what I'm grateful for. You so I'm not. That's journal. a good start. I'm not fully like unaware of that <laughs> life is still no is it's good. hard i think no matter where you are at in life like no matter how much success you achieve yeah. or whatever you're always gonna have issues like satisfaction just, is never satisfied people yeah so you just have to try to stay in the moment as much as possible yeah. keep on meditating i don't think you meditate but start if you don't maybe i'll try in light of trying to understand you more i'll meditate well i'm just meditating to try to not blow up on people <laughs> <laughs> then keep doing that <laughs> all right you guys that is all for today's episode of the sip thank you morgan very much for joining us you can follow her on youtube search morgan adams follow her on instagram morgan adams of course follow me at ryland adams lizzie lizzie.gordon and the sip official also watch our youtube channel the sip clips to get full episodes and that is it for this week we will see you next wednesday i love you very much goodbye is there an outro song just say and that's the sip <laughs> <laughs> Which Bye. is the least cringe thing about it. <laughs>